Hello students, today I am going to take lecture on Advanced Java Unit 5 Java Server Faces and in this video I am going to explain JSF Request Processing Life Cycle. JSF Request Processing Life Cycle is most important question. This is also known as JSF Life Cycle. So JSF Request Processing Life Cycle, JSF Application Life Cycle which consists of 6 phases which are as follows. Phase number one, restore view. I'll be explain each phase in detail. First of all, I'm listing all the phases. So phase number one, restore view. Phase number two, apply request value, which is also known as ARV. Third phase, process validation. Fourth phase, update model values. Fifth, invoke application. And sixth, render response. When client sent request to JSF component, it will initialize with phase number one that is restore view and while updating all the component tree, it will reach to rendering the HTML response and phase number six will send that response to client application. So explaining each phase in detail step by step. Initializing with block diagram. Here the slide represents a block diagram of JSF request processing life cycle. Starting with a client request, then phase number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th, 6th that is rendering a response and sending that response to original client. So this is a block diagram of a JSF request processing life cycle. Starting with the first step is restore view, create or restore view. When client send request to JSF component then how this request processing will go further so step number one restore view JSF begins the restore view phase as soon as a link or a button is being clicked to JSF component and JSF receives request next point during this phase the JSF builds a view wires event handler that is connect event handlers when any click event happens then event handlers need to be invoked so JSF components will build user interface connect it with event handlers and validators either this request is valid request or not to UI component and save the view in the face context instance so next time if the same client request then the component tree is available so during this phase as soon as client send request to the component this phase will create a view and connect it with event handlers the face context instance this is object of a faces library will now contains all the information required to process a request so whenever first a request appears from client side that request is sent to restore view where it will store the view of a new request or postback request so when client send request to the restore view it will build a view it will decide which event handler will handle it and all the processing steps are being saved at object faces context instance and will now contains all the information required to process a request to phase number two phase number two is apply request value that is arv now the request is received from client side now we need to process that request further so this thing is handled by phase number two in this phase the value that are entered by the user will be updated on each and every individual component defined in view graph now in this stage the component tree get updated for example if it is new request then new component tree is being designed for example after click event of radio button user had clicked submit button so that component tree will get updated if it is post back if it is post back request if it is new request then new component tree is being designed in phase number 2 component to store this value so whatever value which is entered by client or selected by the client with a different different type of component that value is being stored if any of the conversions or validation fail by chance then the current processing will get terminated and 
controller will directly go to last stage which is the render response phase number 6 for rendering the conversion or validation error to client. So here render response will create an appropriate HTML page which will inform client if there is any conversion or validation error. So here in this phase the component tree will be designed and if validation or conversation fail then it will directly switch over from phase number 2 to phase number 6 that is from apply request value to directly render response. Phase number 3. In phase number 2, the component tree will get ready. Then next phase is a process validation. This phase will process any validation that are configured for UI components. So whenever UI component get designed by developer, they have created certain validations. So if that validation fail, then directly giving appropriate message to client through render response stage. This validation will only happen for UI components only if a render property is set to true. So if the permission is given to render the response then and only then the validation will be executed here. Then next stage update model value. This phase explain updating Java bean or managed bean value. Update model value. After the JSF check that data is valid it walks over component tree and set the corresponding server side object property to the components local value. So now in this stage whatever component tree is there it will set or retrieve value to or for the components. For example if user had selected a radio button then the value of that radio button need to be updated to managed bean or java bean class that is java class java managed bean class contains getter and setter method so it will retrieve or set the value of component the jsf will update the bean properties corresponding to input component value attributes so in this phase whatever component tree had created by phase number two the value of that component will get updated to managed bean class next phase invoke application during this phase here the jsf handle any application level event such as submitting a form or linking current page to next page in this phase jsf implementation will call the method name process application which will immediately call render response so this phase will directly invoke an application to give appropriate response to client application with the help of process application method. So this phase is used to link any other page or any other application level event. The last phase is a render response. Phase number one was creating just a restore view. Phase number two was uh, creating component tree. Phase number three was validating it. Phase number four was updating model value in management. Phase number five will invoke an application and last phase whatever response is being received after invoking an application will be converted to HTML response and sending back to client. So now let us read and finally we have reached the render response whose job is to render or to give the response back to client application. If the request is a new request then there is no ready-made component tree available for that client application. So what will happen when new request is there? When a new request comes from client side it will go to restore view where view of that request is being created. Then a component tree is being designed with the help of restore view. After that component tree either we need to set value of the component from managed bin or we need to retrieve value or we need to give value to managed bin from component tree. For example, if user had ticked a checkbox then that value is to be submitted to managed bin and store there. If last component, let's say component number 6 want that value of checkbox then that value is to be retrieved from managed bin and no intermediate steps will be there for new request and directly giving a response to client. Comparing with post back request. If there is post back request that is old request from client side then we already have some component tree for that particular client application. So here that view is being created then either the same request is there 
then same component tree will be there or a component tree may get updated depends on client request then validation process updating that value if component tree is being updated then obviously some value is being updated so either getting or setting value to manage bin then next is to invoke application at this stage whatever output is there the response of client is ready in invoke application and then last stage is rendering the response to client application so this is difference between a new request and post back request a new request only one stage that is creating restore view and then creating component tree and directly rendering response while if it is an older or post back request then request processing life cycle will go through all the six phases so overview of jsf request processing life cycle first is restore view the task of restore view is to recover the component tree view or if it is new request then weave the request next is apply request value add new parameter to recover component tree so here either new component tree or updated component tree will get created process validation will validate the parameter entered by user interface then update model value which will update all the bean properties corresponding to input component to value attribute which depends again on component tree invoking application this instance managed bin add the value of the component to property manage bin and execution of its method rendering a response this will add value to the attribute to a component tree and it will generate response in form of html code with this we complete jsf request processing life cycle with all its phases there are total six phase and this is the most important question for gtu examination so student prepare it well with this i complete jsf request processing life cycle thank you all of you